Speaker, this is one of the most important bills <clears throat> we, I have spoken on in this place, and this bill will have the biggest impacts on the lives of Victorian people that any of us will probably make in this place. I support the amendments moved by the Leader of the Opposition because they ensure that the rights of Victorians are protected and put in place appropriate scrutiny of decisions that will impact the lives of Victorians by the people they have democratically elected to represent them. I want to make it clear from the outset that under no circumstance do I believe we should do nothing to manage this pandemic. I want to make that very clear. There will be some measures that we will have to put in place that will be with us for some time. As a nurse of some 30 years experience, I have a decent understanding of viruses and their transmission, and I know that a virus like this needs to be managed. I've said right from the outset of this pandemic, there will be virus cases, outbreaks, clusters, until we get a vaccine, and the way these outbreaks are managed is the key. But those measures need appropriate scrutiny, and the best way to do that is by this place sitting every month to allow the elected representatives of the community to make these decisions, not unelected bureaucrats, clearly after advice from the experts has been delivered and considered. Discussions like suppress or eliminate is a debate that's not being had. The community are not even aware of what the strategy is. It's all been decided by those who are not willing to share the rationale, put the evidence in place, or tell us how the data stacks up. That's why I support the amendments that propose a month-to-month -month extension that require the parliament to sit and approve those extensions. When you see examples like the farmers' markets, where at 8.30 on a Thursday night, I think it was, a decision was made that all those who were ready and geared up to have their produce uh, ready for sale were told at 8.30 that the farmers' market was cancelled. To then, 35 minutes later, have that decision turned uh, around because of the pressure shows you there is not an evidence-based planned approach. There is decisions being made on the fly, and that is not how good decisions are made. In here, with good decisions, that's where debate should occur. These bills propose to, this bill sorry, proposes to lengthen the total period from six months of emergency um, to another six months. It was originally 12, now six, whether it's three, whatever, it shouldn't be lengthened without the month-to-month -month oversight. It's also a push in Clause 6, which I support the removal of, to um, make something, and instead of being necessary, reasonably necessary. Now, you have a think about that. On first thought, it doesn't seem much difference, but when you think it through, there is a very big difference. It gives the Chief Health Officer a wider scope of, to keep restrictions in place, and even if there isn't the evidence to, to suggest that we need to have those um, restrictions still in place. It's just one man's decision with very, very little oversight or no oversight. There's no evidence provided, it's just his opinion. I don't think I've had more contact about, contact about a piece of legislation in my five years as a member in this place on any other issue. My emails are being flooded, my phone is running off the hook in both the office and my personal phone. Um, people are deeply concerned about how this pandemic has been managed and don't understand how Victoria is now in this position. The way the Premier has gone about seeking this extension has angered people. The Premier knows that the clause that caps a state of emergency declaration was going to be an issue for months now. But rather than consult, he stands up in a media conference and lectures people about what they have done wrong and tells them it's because he needs these powers. He waited until the last minute to do anything and has pushed this through the parliament, no doubt with some sort of dodgy deal with the Greens and the minor parties in the other place. Rather than tell people how he's going to bring us out of this crisis, the Premier said, give me the power first and then I'll tell you, and that has angered people. The community recognised we're in this position because of the failings of this government to properly manage hotel quarantine and contact tracing. That is how the virus got back in the community and they know that the government's response and management of the clusters and outbreak has been poor. That's why in my region we didn't wait when we, there were cases, we just got on and got it done. 
The people, the businesses and the local health services worked cohesively and very well. In Portland, two outbreaks have been managed expertly by the Portland District Health under the leadership of Christine Giles and the unwavering support of her team and the local community. The same thing happened in Warrnambool when a cluster developed. Southwest Healthcare CEO Craig Fraser and his team managed the situation incredibly well. These two health services didn't sit around and wait for the government to tell them what to do. They got on with it and they knew what needed to be done. Contacts were traced quickly and put into isolation. Businesses acted immediately, proactively closing and testing all their staff and isolating close, close contacts. What could have been explosive outbreaks, explosive outbreaks like we've seen in Melbourne, did not grow out of control because the local health services, businesses and community knew what had to be done and got on and worked together and did it. And when one of the initial positive cases in Portland proved difficult to contact trace for a variety of reasons, Portland District Health made testing more accessible to the community in high profile locations, nimble and flexible response. They were open and honest and gave the community the information they needed, something else we've seen lacking from the Daniel Andrews approach. We had businesses like Midfield Meats take proactive steps when there was potential exposure to a positive case. They shut down the production for three days and tested every single member of their staff, despite the department's advice that they could continue. Midfield had also taken extensive proactive measures before the exposure, including extensive cleaning and PPE. But they were rewarded by government, ignoring them, not picking up the phone, not talking to one of the largest uh, abattoirs in our state, and found out that they had to compromise their business by cutting 30% of production without any consultation. It was appalling. We had to work very hard to get some sensible outcome for that business, which employs most, many people in my community, the largest employer in the private sector, to actually be able to continue. No consultation, just an order from above. A local hairdresser in Port Ferry had staff member, a staff member test positive and again positively closed and tested contacts and contact traced herself despite the department saying she could continue. Same thing in Haywood. They didn't wait, they got on and got it done. I keep saying I'm incredibly impressed by the way our hospitals and business and community have responded, but I'm not surprised because it's what our community always does very well. Unfortunately though, despite the exceptional response locally, a Portland man in his 50s died from the virus. I want to put on the record my deepest condolence to the man's wife and his children and to his friends and colleagues who will still be feeling the shock of this loss. I want to make it very clear that the results in my part of the world are not because of this government's response. It's because of local people getting on doing the work to highlight just how little the, impacts the impact the government's response had on controlling clusters in my electorate I want to share this with you. I spoke with a person in the Portland region who had been identified as a close contact and subsequently tested positive themselves. They f their first contact with the Department of Health was 10 days after they were confirmed positive. That contact was telling them that they needed to isolate and start the process of contact tracing. They'd already been in isolation. They'd done all the contact and if they hadn't have done that, that's when we would have seen explosions. I repeat, this happened 10 days after that positive test. Thankfully, the team at Portland District Health was on top of the situation. They identified all the close contacts with the person in involved. Initial close, uh, the initial positive case in the first couple of days was isolated and asked them to be tested and all the people around them. The person who had tested positive, positive also did their own contact tracing and isolation. Can you imagine what would have happened if we relied on the government's response? The case in Portland and indeed Warrnambool would have exploded and our small community but mighty hospitals could have been overrun and unable to cope with the demand. There's a lot to be learned from these localised responses and I hope the Minister and the Department looks at this closely and takes it on board. Victoria is in this mess because of the failings of this government. It was the government who let the virus out of hotel quarantine and poorly managed the subsequent outbreaks and the second wave that is gripping Victoria, not Australia, but Victoria, Victoria and other states are now returning to normal while Victorians are locked in their homes. Now we are back here with government asking for another six months and asking us to trust them to get it right? No, sorry. I'll be supporting the opposition's amendments to protect the rights and freedoms of Victorians and ensure that decisions are being made properly and properly scrutinised and there's appropriate accountability in place. We must manage the virus.
but the way this government is managing it is not okay.